Hey guys, uh, I just thought I'd shoot this really quick video for, for you to uh, talk about sleep. The, uh, the health and fitness industry is a funny one because um, there aren't very many sleep practitioners kind of um, available on every corner like there are practitioners of other things. So um, it involves a degree of sort of self-diagnosis going to see someone so if we go to a personal trainer we've decided we've we've got an exercise problem and if we go and see a nutritionist we've decided we've got a food problem and if we go to see a chiropractor or a physio or something like that we've decided we've got a pain problem and, and on the surface um, that might be where we're placing our problem but but more often than not in my experience when I find someone who's got um, who isn't exercising regularly um, or isn't eating in the way that, that they would like to, or has pain that um, it hasn't come from major incident but isn't really going away, more often than not I'll find that they're sleeping very little, they're waking up tired in the morning, and they're, you know, they're staying up later at night than, than they even want to, and uh, or waking up in the middle of the night. And this is quite a major problem. In fact, I've done a survey of of 100 people and found 70% of them were saying that they were either waking up tired or uh, struggling to get to sleep or stay asleep. So sleep's a major thing, there aren't very many people sort of dealing with it. So um, I thought I'd kind of shoot this video to help people out to optimise their sleep and then have a look at do they really have a diet problem or a pain problem or an exercise problem or are those things just kicking in more naturally now that my body is recovering properly and performing how it should. So um, the way to look at sleep is that it is a 24 hour cycle called our circadian rhythm and sleep just kind of forms part of that. And so does our digestion and you know when we go to the toilet and when we've got high energy and low energy. Now what wakes us up in the morning is stress hormone cortisol coming up and the um, sleep hormone melatonin going down. And at the end of the night what um, sends us to sleep is melatonin going up and cortisol going down. And that, um, that is a signal that is generally set by, by routine. When the routines of going to sleep start to emerge, we start to get more tired. But there are a number of things that sort of interrupt with that routine. So um, light, for example, we're sort of tuned in to start reducing cortisol and increasing melatonin when light goes down. But we spend so much time looking at screens in the evening, we've got overhead lighting in our house, and uh, we're looking at our Facebook screens and, and things like that um, will keep the cortisol going and stop the melatonin being produced. So downloading an app like Flux or um, resolving to switch your phone off at uh, 9 o'clock at night or um, trying to get lower level lighting in your house or just not turning on the overhead lights and putting um, lower ones on in the evening, switching your telly off an hour before you want to go to sleep. Little things like that are really useful. Something that I have that many of you may have as well is my brain doesn't kind of step out of problem so solving mode. So something that I do is I try and read uh, just 15, 20 minutes of fiction to switch my brain from that problem solving mode to, to something more relaxed, kind of being taken along on a, a really simple, clear journey. So uh, at the moment I'm reading um, the fourth book in the... Um, Millennium, I don't know what the next one is from Trilogy, um, but yeah, there it is. Uh, not as good as the other three, but not written by the guy that wrote it. Anyway, I do that. Um, also, I try and get my muscles to relax and repair my nervous system. I take magnesium citrate. Um, magnesium citrate is involved in just so many reactions in your body that really helps kind of aid the recovery process and really helps you drop off to sleep if that's something you're challenged with. Um, I also try and drink this lavender tea. So any tea with lavender just makes it easier to drop off to sleep. But also paying attention to what I do during the day. So it's useful to have a really solid structured routine just before bed. But if you work backwards from there, it's also really useful to um, to look at the things that you're eating during the day. If you're getting sugar spikes up and down, up and down, up and down by snacking um, in the middle of the day, uh, snacking between meals, um, then that can tend to deliver 
a sugar spike at some point in the day and then you try and remedy that at another point in the day it just keeps going up and down and up and down and up and down um i've got many other tips on on helping you to sleep better and if you're interested to hear them drop some questions below tell me what you struggle with i'd love to um dig into that with you um or you can obviously get in touch this video is going on uh, far too long now um so i'm gonna go and read my book and chill out for a bit um thanks for watching and uh, i'll try and do some more soon zed from absolute health